What's up amigos, today we have the second necromancer video in my pre-release series and this one is pretty amazing and definitely one of my favorites. Today we're going over the surge mancer. Did I do that right? Just take one word and add mancer to the end, I think that's what I'm supposed to do anyways. So let's get into it. Now the blood surge necromancer is one of the coolest damn builds in all of Diablo 4 I think. It's just visually pleasing, honestly it's just a work of art I think. What's not to love about being able to boil your foe's bloods to the point of eruption or draining the life from your enemies and exploding into a bloody mess. Now as usual let's start off with the pros and the cons. So the first pro it's great for solo and group play. Not only are you bring in just a lot of tankiness and frontline to your group you are also just bringing a bunch of defensive layers and just great aoe clear so it's a good starting build also it's not reliant on gear whatsoever and as usual you will be able to scale with a bunch of aspects if you watch my last video you would see the list of aspects are pretty large necromancer has the most aspects available to them out of any class so because of the aoe and the clear speed of the build and it has great sustain early on, you even build into thorns, it's going to be a great leveling choice. Now what makes this build unique is the overpower mechanic. It's very, very overpowered and we get it so much. As I mentioned before, one of the biggest pros to this build is the clear speed. It has amazing, amazing AOE. This build also has multiple defensive layers like flat damage reduction and just immunity. And this is without the aspects. It's also a very, very fun build. I mean, again, blood explosions, hell yes. Now for the cons, the single target is primarily from your overpower mechanic until you get the aspects. That does not mean you are weak when it comes to single target. It is just reliant more so on the overpower mechanic. I mean, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know what's coming, mobility. It's honestly just a meme at this point. I really do hope that we get some more movement spells across the entire class selection when season one drops, maybe. That's a hope that uh, probably won't happen, but possibly in season two. Now, the build is very in your face, so it's practically a melee class. Blood Surge acts as a Nova ability, and this build is running no minions, which is a deal breaker for some. Now let's go over, over our abilities. Hemorrhage is our basic skill of choice. We burst our enemy's blood with our mind, of course. 20% chance to form a blood orb. Enhanced Hemorrhage grants the ability when we pick up a blood orb to AoE and grants two additional essence per enemy hit. And then Initiate Hemorrhage, grants 1.6%, it's an odd value, but 1.6% base life is fortified each time it hits an enemy. Additionally, we have a 1.5% chance per enemy hit to fortify ourselves for 100%, which is actually pretty freaking insane. Our blood surge is our main core skill. We draw blood from the target and let out a blood nova. Even the description of this ability sounds pretty sick. Blood Surge Nova damage increased by 10% per enemy drained, aka per enemy hit, up to 50%. Enhanced Blood Surge allows us to heal 2.5% max life when drawn blood from enemies. If four or more enemies are drawn from, then heal for an additional 2.5% max life. So if four or more enemies are hit, we are healing 5% per enemy hit pretty huge paranormal allows us to gain a stack of overwhelming blood when we damage an enemy with blood surge while we are healthy healthy means 80 percent or more hp once we reach five stacks of overwhelming blood our next blood surge overpowers moving on to blood mist blood mist if any of you ever played league of legends yeah we're pretty much vladimir and we disperse into a bloody mist, becoming immune for three seconds. I mean, does this sound familiar at all? We periodically deal 1.7% damage to enemies hit and heal for 0.5 max life through the duration. Enhance allows us to reduce the cooldown of a blood of our blood mist every time we cast a skill that overpowers. And ghastly allows our blood mist to leave behind a corpse every 0.95 seconds. We're just gonna say a second every second for the duration. So it's three corpses through the entire duration of 
Blood Mist. Our curse that we use is Iron Maiden. So, since we are in melee range, this is our choice because we will be getting hit a lot. That's when we're not one-shotting everything around us. Iron Maiden curses enemies, and while they're afflicted, they deal 10% damage to themselves every time they deal direct damage to us, so it's pretty much just a curse to grant ourselves thorns, indirectly of course, but what's cool about this is enhanced Iron Maiden makes it to where Iron Maiden no longer costs essence, instead we gain 5 essence per enemy cursed, so this is a generator, a secondary generator, which is pretty massive for the build because we are constantly spamming blood surge. Abhorrent heals us for 5% max life when an enemy dies while afflicted with Iron Maiden. So if you watched my last video, you know how much I like corpse tendrils, um, it's no different here. I think this is a great ability. Not only does it not consume a corpse, so we can keep using the same corpse if we need to. Corpse tendrils uh, pulls enemies in, groups them, stuns them for three seconds. With enhanced, it slows the enemies before they pull in, which CCs them. And then plague, when hit by corpse tendrils, makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds. So it's a big old wombo combo. We stun, we slow, we inf we inflict vulnerability. It's all in one button. For our ultimate of choice, we are going with Bone Storm. Again, I really like this ability. You can, if you want to just fit the theme, run Blood Wave. Blood Wave actually does do pretty decent damage. It's on a lower cooldown and it knocks enemies back. Blood Wave also, if you run Prime, slows enemies and leaves behind three Blood Orbs. But for this build, Bone Storm, when Bone Storm is active with Prime, we gain a 15% damage reduction, and with Supreme, 20% crit chance. Now our keystone is Rathma's Vigor. Increase maximum life by 10%. After being healthy for 15 seconds, our next blood skill overpowers. So this is just another way to obtain overpower. Again, this build, that's the whole build. Instead of applying vulnerability as much as we can, like comparative to my last build, we are just really stacking up that overpower damage and just relying on that. So for our Book of the Dead, we are sacking our Skeletal Warriors for Crit Strike. We are sacking our Skeletal Mages for overpower damage, increased by 40%, and our Golem for 30% Crit Strike damage. For our passives, we are putting one point into Unliving Energy. This is a prereq, but it just gives us three max en uh, essence. And perfectly balanced, this is the big one, our core skills cost 9% more essence but deal 15% more damage. Over here we take spiked armor, this is especially great early on, grab this early while you're leveling, you gain a flat value, 120 thorns, this is a lot of thorns, don't get me wrong. This is why also in the written guide, under the affixes to look for, we are also stacking thorns where we can. Thorn damage plays a big role in this build because, again, we are always in range. Always in melee range, rather. And it's just a nice little additive. We take 3 points in Death's Embrace. Close enemies take 6% more damage. Again, we're a Nova build. We're always in melee. And they deal 9% less damage to us. We take Amp Damage. 9% increased damage to cursed enemies. Iron Maiden is our curse. Over here, in the Renown 10 build, we take 3 points in Gruesome Mending. This is just an extra defensive like minor layer while we're below 50 percent life we receive 30 percent more healing from all sources we have plenty of healing from others other sources so in the renowned one we're only putting one point in here um coalesced blood while healthy our blood skills deal 18 percent increased damage we're always aiming to be healthy and fortified so this uptime should be pretty significant drain vitality a lucky hit hidden enemies with blood skills has a 25 percent chance to fortify us for 7.5 percent base life this is just a nice extra proc tides of blood your blood skills deal 15 percent increase over power damage this bonus is doubled while you are healthy which means 30 percent increase over power damage and again, we're always aiming to be healthy. We will not have a hard time sustaining these buffs, the healthy uh, tag, because of just the mitigation that we have and the healing that we have in the build along with Fortify. Necrotic Carapace, when a corpse is formed from your skills or your minions, Fortify for 6% base life. Our Blood Mist with the Enhanced will give us three corpses, so you can expect 18% base life fortification. Standalone. This is a huge defensive for us, increased 
flat damage reduction by 18%. This would be reduced by 2% two, uh, for each active minion, but in this case, we have no active minions. We sack them all. We also run three in Memento Mori. Sacrifice in both Skeletal Warriors and Skeletal Mages increases their sacrifice bonus by 60%. In this case, it would be our crit chance and our overpower damage. And that's it for the build. Um, again, like usual, if you guys have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the build guide. I have a link to the written guide in the description down below. If you enjoy the content, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe. I have a couple more coming up and then Sorceress for the rest of the pre-release series. And then by then, we will actually be able to play Diablo 4. So until next time, amigos, Take care.